In the 9th century, there were three witches whose souls would frighten you in suspense. Their ugly selves, let their first gathering regards to Macbeth's future to commence. When shall we three meet again? In thunder, lightning, or in rain? When the hurry burly's done, when the battle's lost and won. That would be ere the set of sun. Where the place? Upon the heath. There to meet with Macbeth. A fortnight passes by after the cold-blooded murder of Banquo, Macbeth arrives to the source of his invitation and witnesses this strange show. By the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes. <laughs> How now, you secret black and midnight hags? What is to do? A deed without a name. <laughs> Told that under cold stone, days and nights are thirty-one. Sweltered venom sleeping got, boil thou first in the charmed pot. I of Newton, toe of frog, wool of bat and tongue of dog. Adder's fork and blind worm sting, lizard's leg and owlet's wing. Nose of turk and tartar's lips, severed in the moon's eclipse. Village of a penny snake in the cauldron boil and bake. Liver of blaspheming you, ball of goat and slips of you. I conjure you by that which you profess. How are you come to know it? Answer me to what I ask you. Speak. Demand. We'll answer. Say if thou hear it from our mouths or from our masters. Call them. Let me see them. Cool it with a baboon's blood, then the charm is firm and good. Macbeth gulps down the strange potion. The room around him appeared to be in motion. The witches grab his drunk self and drag him to the pot. The warmth of the concoction is still fiery hot. Could it be? A ghostly likeness appears from within. Macbeth's voice silences for a moment, but then his speech, he let it begin. Tell me, thou unknown power. He knows thy thought. Macbeth, Macbeth, Macbeth. Beware, Macduff. Beware the thane of fight. Thou hast harped my fear aright. But one word more. He will not be commanded. Be bloody, bold, and resolute. Laugh to scorn the power of man. For none of woman born shall harm Macbeth. Then live, Macduff. What need I fear of thee? But yet I'll make assurance double sure, and take a bond of fate. Thou shalt not live! Macbeth shall never vanquished be. Never, never. Until, Until great, great Burnham, Burnham Wood, Wood to High Dunsinane Hill, Hill shall come shall against, against him. him. <laughs> 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 that will never be. Who can recruit the forest? Bid the tree unfix his earthbound roots. Sweet Boldman Scott! that my heart throbs to know one thing. <laughs> Shall Banquo's issue ever reign in this kingdom? I to know no more! I will be satisfied! Deny me this, and an eternal curse fall on you! Thou art too like the spirit of Banquo. Thy crown does sear mine eyeballs! What? Will the line stretch out to the crack of doom? Now see, it is true. For the blood bolted Banquo smiles upon me and points at them for his! Just as quick as the witches came, they went. That marked the end of Macbeth's power driven vent. But this also marks the beginning of another problem. Macbeth realizes someone else, 
is after his royal emblem. Yet, he heard it best and himself quoted, Harm Macbeth, none of woman born. That causes him to smile in a fit of cockiness and in a scorn. He exits the empty, haunted caves and enters the mainlands once again. He is preparing himself for a major world of extreme pain. Now comes the day Great Burnham would hide Dunsinane Hill, Macbeth knows that the intruder intends to kill. Macbeth initially mocks the unwelcome guest in order to act tough, but there's a very big secret behind the story of Macduff. My soul is too much charged with blood of thine already. Let fall thy blade on vulnerable crests. I bear a charmed life which must not yield to one of woman born. Despair thy charm, and let the angel whom thou still hast served tell thee, Macduff was from his mother's womb untimely ripped. A curse it is the tongue that tells me so, for it hath cowed my better part of man. And be these and be juggling, juggling fiends, fiends no more believed that palter with us in a double in sense. sense. But keep the word, keep the word of promise, promise to our to ear and break it to our hope. I will not yield to kiss the ground before young Malcolm's feet and to be baited with the rabble's curse. Though Burnham would be come to Dunsinane, and thou opposed being of no woman born. Yet I will try the last. Lay on Macduff. It is now clear that Macduff's mother died from a caesarean. Macbeth lunges towards him with a sword like a barbarian. Swords begin to clash and several stabs are made, lots of blood being shed at the edge of the blade. Suddenly, a great pain fills at Macbeth's chest. Macduff had stabbed his heart under his plate of breast. Macbeth stumbles gorily all over the courtyard, shocking everyone, while his last thoughts alive ponder at the thought of his life being done. Macduff is pestered by the fact that Macbeth is not dead, so he draws his sword once more and cuts off his head. Could it be? The head seen from his drunken vision was in fact, his own. Had Macbeth listened closely and more diligently to the witches, he would have known. Now comes the point of our tragic end. Don't be as ignorant or distracted like our egotistic friend. <laughs>